Thanks to the data mine, we have stats and abilities for all the new Pokemon and new forms in Pokemon Legends Arceus. So let's see how good they are in battle. Hello everybody, Blaine here for Bridge 4 Games. Yeah, this is big news. We actually have stats for all the new Pokemon, all the new forms in Pokemon Legends Arceus. And if that's not awesome enough, we have all their abilities as well. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably asking yourself, but didn't you say there were no abilities in the game? Well, that's true. There aren't. But all of the new Pokemon and new forms have a flag on them in the code to signify what abilities they're going to get when the Pokemon are transferred into Pokemon Home and then Gen 9. So even though no actual abilities are working within the game right now, there are flags to signify what abilities they're going to get, meaning we can use this information to kind of figure out how good they'll be in battle. And let me tell you, some of these Pokemon are really, really good because of the abilities they're going to get. So it has the potential to shake up singles. It has the potential to shake up VGC. So I really just want to dive in and share all this with you guys because you're probably going to look at some of these new Pokemon a little differently when you see what they're capable of. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at them. But before I do, I just want to take a second to ask that if you like the videos we have here on the channel, please make sure that you actually like them by hitting the thumbs up button. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel to become part of our amazing Pokemon community to make sure that you never miss any of the awesome videos like this one. All right, it's battle time. All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and look at the new Pokemon. But one thing I just want to make sure that you are aware of, I'm only going to be really looking at the final evolutions for the most part, because... Really, at the end of the day, this is more of a competitive analysis than anything else, and pretty much the base forms are usually just the same as the, you know, fully evolved forms, except, you know, maybe a little bit of stat difference. So, the only real situation where we're going to talk about the base forms is if they offer something the final evos don't. So, if for some reason they have a different ability or a different typing, something like that, I don't think any of that really applies. Or in the case of one of these, if they seem to be a viable candidate for an Eviolite, we're going to talk about that one as well, because if they're not fully evolved, they can use the item to get 50% boost to their defense and special defense, which can make them really viable Pokemon. So let's go ahead and get started. So first up, we have our Hisuian Arcanine. As we know, it is Fire Rock. Nothing all that crazy there. Uh, Ability-wise, pretty much the same as normal Arcanine. It has Intimidate, Flash Fire, and Justified. Uh, Justified being its hidden ability. So the stats have been altered a little bit, but... It is still an amazingly good Pokemon. So 115 attack is certainly very good given the, you know, sort of abilities it has here because you can use it with beat up to make your Pokemon get plus four attack, which is nuts. Intimidate, obviously, arguably the best ability in VGC. Very, very useful. So really exciting to see that. It has really good natural bulk with those 80s and 95 HP. And, you know, it even has enough special attack left over where... You could run it special if you wanted to, but now it is starting to pull away kind of from how old Arcanine was thanks to the extra five boost in its attack stats. So, you know, the stats for most of these are going to be pretty similar to what their forms were before. So if we have like a, you know, a new version from like a Kantomon or something like that, they're usually going to be pretty similar. But in the case here, they did get five extra points to attack, which is really, really helpful. The only problem here is that it's very weak to a lot of common things. So, you know, ultimately, I think people are probably going to end up sticking with normal Arcanine. That being said, this Arcanine is still very good, very cool. So I wouldn't be surprised if it, you know, sees you somewhere. I just don't quite know in what capacity that will be. It's obviously much better at checking flyers. So if that ever becomes a thing that people need to worry about, that's an option. But uh, yeah, overall, you know, he's a very good Pokemon. I like him a lot. And uh, he's an absolute powerhouse, kind of hampered by that one fact that he has kind of a loose typing. So Moving on from there, we have Hisuian Electrode, which everybody knows about because uh, everybody was, you know, hoping it'd be a little bit different than it is. But again, it is just the normal uh, Apricorn Tumblestone Pokeball upside down. And that being said, it does have kind of very similar stats to Electrode. Uh, so obviously it has Aftermath, Static, and Soundproof. Aftermath is really cool, you know, certainly being able to kind of take revenge on the Pokemon that knocks it out. But, you know, the problem is even though, you know, Electrode has a new typing giving it grass which does help out against things like the, you know, ground weakness, and certainly you can't get walled by ground anymore. Electrode really just doesn't have the stats to make itself be good. I know that's a really kind of harsh thing to say, but if you look at a Pokemon like Regilecki, it has that really high speed. Like, Electrode has 150. Regilecki has 200, which is amazing. But unlike Regilecki, this, you know, Electrode just doesn't have the offensive ability to do much at all. 
Like, it doesn't have any real defensive stats or offensive stats. I mean, 50 and 80 in attack and special attack is really nothing all that impressive. And 70 and 80 for defense and special defense are wildly average and 60 HP is kind of below average as well. So unfortunately, I think it looks amazing. I think it's a really cool idea. I think it has an amazingly cool typing and that's where the pros end. So I wouldn't recommend using this guy competitively, but grab it at your collection because it does look really cool in your Pokedex. So moving on from there, we have Histuian Typhlosion. All right, now everybody, you've seen the video where I covered he, you know, him with the flames out. He looks a lot better than he does here, so please don't take the um, image here to mean that he doesn't look great or anything like that. Just uh, I'm going to link that video I had right now, actually. It's actually the first clip I covered. Go watch it. You'll see what it looks like animated. It looks a lot better. So now that uh, you know, caveat's out of the way here. The thing about this Typhlosion, it is slower and less bulky than normal Typhlosion, but they gave it 10 more special attacking points. So they really made it kind of very much like a lot of other ghost Pokemon where it's much more of a glass cannon, albeit, you know, not a ton, but again, it did lose what five speed points here. It lost, uh, five HP to gain 10 special attack points. So I don't know. I, I, I think that's cool. I mean, that makes it a lot more threatening. Certainly if it gets like eruption, like it normal Typhlosion has being able to pull that off with a 119 special attack is pretty good. The, the problem I think though, is that losing that little bit of HP there, is, is really a problem because, you know, Fire Ghost is weak to a lot of very common things competitively. Like, Ghost is a very good type competitively. We're probably going to have to deal with nonsense from um, Hisui and uh, Zoroark, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But again, Rock, Ground, and Water, all very, very common in VGC and, and singles as well. So because of that, you know, honestly, I'm not uh, totally sold on kind of the changes they made. I still think Hisui and Typhlosion is really cool. I'm probably going to actually use it in a playthrough at some point. But again, competitively, I have I, I have some concerns. We'll say that. And, and dark as well. Everybody likes having dark Pokemon because it's a good type. Also, that also poses a problem for Typhlosion. So it, it kind of just is what it is there. You know, again, very similar to Arcanine. A very good Pokemon that is just kind of hampered by the fact it has that kind of little bit wonky typing. All right. So now we have Hisui and Quillfish here with Eviolite. Now, the reason I brought this up is because Hisui and Quillfish got an evolution into uh, Overquill, I think is the name in Pokemon Legends Arceus, meaning that this is now entitled to use Eviolite and get those bonuses. Now, Eviolite does give a 50% boost to your defense and special defense if you are not fully evolved Pokemon. So the reason I really liked Quillfish is because it had stats for final Pokemon before, and then they gave it a new form with Overquill. So it's not great. I'm going to tell you that right now, but there are some kind of special things that make it viable in terms of being you know, used in that way. So Poison Dark is an incredible defensive typing because it's only weak to ground, which is fantastic. Now, that being said, Quillfish has 85 natural defense and 55 natural special defense, which is, again, pretty, I mean, it's a little bit lackluster, but if we go ahead and give it the Eviolite, it does boost the actual stat by 50%, not the, uh, you know, base number here. So typically it's actually higher than, you may want to say just take 85 and multiply it times 1.5, it actually is going to end up being a higher number than that because it multiplies the actual stat. So typically you probably end up with a defense stat equivalent to something around 135. And then in the case of its special defense, probably something in the 80s, which is again, not that bad, especially when you have access to Intimidate. Now, being Poison Dark, it probably has access to a lot of good uh, support type moves, including maybe some decent offensive moves as well. So maybe it'll get access to Knock Off or maybe it'll get access to like Snarl. It could just be a very useful Pokemon. I'm not saying it's going to be format defining or anything, but I think depending on its moves, it's probably going to be at the very least worth trying. And you never know. It could actually be really strong, you know, just because it's going to have a pretty good defensive stat and a not terrible attack stat. I mean, 95 is not awful. It's, it's very, you know, average. But again, and if it gets access to any sort of setup moves, you could make it even more powerful that way. So I don't really know what this thing is going to look like when it's actually being used, if it's ever used. But again... It has the potential to actually do something thanks to that typing and now thanks to that evolution. So going on from here, I want to talk about uh, Overquill, obviously the evolution here. So again, Dark Poison has the same, uh, you know, moves, has the same abilities there. Poison Point, Swift Swim, and Intimidate. Most of the time people are going to be using Intimidate. So don't really, you know, bother getting one of the other two. It doesn't really have enough going for it to kind of make the other ones work as far as I can tell. 
So that being said, you know, it, it's it's decent. All right, so the trade-offs here are that it gets a little more, it has 20 more HP, and I believe 10 more defense than Quillfish, and it has, what, uh, Quillfish has 95, so it has 20 more than um, Quillfish does there. So not, not bad, um, but, you know, nothing really crazy to write home about. Again, if you do use an Eviolite, you'll have defenses that are much higher than this here. So something to just keep in mind. I'm not really sure if this is going to see play. Again, it has a really good typing. If it gets access to some really decent moves, it could. But again, 115 is... It's good. It's not incredible, you know, especially when you're not bringing terrain or some other way to naturally boost it. So I think in this case, going with the, you know, higher defensive option may be a better idea. But again, you know, having a decent, you know, Intimidate Pokemon that has 115 attack is certainly nothing to sneeze at. So just something to keep in mind. I hope this thing sees play because it actually is really cool. I love the little Q on its tail. I think that's neat. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Just something we're going to have to try and see how it, you know, ends up working. So, but 10 stars, you know, 10 out of 10 for the name. I love Overquill. It's a very interesting kind of pun. Very, uh, very funny. So I love it. Let's go into Hisuian Samurott Water Dark awesomely cool typing i love it a lot um it is again weak to a lot so we do need to make sure that it is actually going to be a viable option here but they did go ahead and make it a definitive sort of uh well make it more geared towards being a physical attacker with that 108 instead of uh you know 100 there for its special it has those extra points in its attack now samurai is probably going to be pretty good for a playthrough because it has decent you know both special attack and physical attack so you can kind of uh change it as you're going through the games you can kind of begin it one way or switch to another one or you can act more reactively for whatever nature you may get um overall i think it's it's really really okay competitively you know water dark is kind of an issue again you know electric is a pretty good typing because it only has one weakness and a lot of people like it because of volt switch so really you know we need bulky water pokemon more of the time and you know 90 80 and 65 for hp defense and special defense is not great certainly not bad it does have the 85 so it's in kind of a weird speed tier but you know shell armor isn't bad if it is able to actually use it it will get those boosts and become a bit more of a you know offensive presence so we'll kind of have to see how that pans out but overall it is one of my favorite designs out of the new pokemon i do really love it so i'm really hoping we're able to make it work but you got to make sure you're keeping it away from the fairies the fighting bug you know electric and grass because all of those are going to cause a lot of problems for samurai all right, going on from there, Hisuian Lilligant. Now, this thing is nuts. As long as it has a couple good fighting moves, this thing could be devastating. And let me tell you why. It's grass fighting, right? So it's weak to a lot. We, we talked about this. It's weak to flying. It's weak to fairy, fire, whatever. It's fine. Let's just, let's just set that aside for a moment, okay? So let's look at the stats first. It has 70 HP, 105 physical attack, 75 defense 75 special defense and 105 speed now we don't care about the 50 special attack it might as well be zero we'll just throw it away because what's interesting is it's a decent attack stat and a decent speed stat look at its abilities we're not looking at chlorophyll and we're not looking at leaf guard this thing has hustle now if you're unaware hustle makes your physical attack 50 percent higher making all of your attacks do a ton of damage like basically this thing has a free choice ban just on it now Unfortunately, it does make the moves less accurate, which is kind of an issue, but let's say this thing gets something like Leaf Blade and Close Combat. If you're able to just spam Close Combat with Hustle and a 105 attack, this thing is going to be able to kill so many Pokemon. It is going to be a huge threat. I mean, this thing looks like an innocent little flower. It is not. Like, anything with Hustle and 100 or better attack is a threat, period. Because, again... Increasing it by 50% does not increase 50% of the base stats. It's 50% of the numerical stat once it's, you know, calculated on the Pokemon. So it's going to end up getting an attack stat that's probably well in excess of 150, which we're talking, I mean, spoiler guys, Dialga, the, the new form, has only 150 special attacks. So we're talking about something that's more powerful than that, that could have access to things like Close Combat and Leaf Blade. That is bonkers and we're talking about you can now on top of that put a life orb on it or whatever you want you can put a choice scarf to make this thing faster a choice band to make its attacks even more powerful like this thing is crazy use it make sure you get one because 
when Gen 9 rolls around, as long as this thing gets some halfway decent moves, it is going to be a very, very serious contender in at least a couple formats. And certainly if you're in a draft league, this thing is going to be something you're going to want to pick up because it can do just a lot of damage. It's a monster. All right. Going on from there, Hisui and Zoroark, we have Ghost Normal, which is really cool. Obviously, it's an incredible typing because it's just like, <laughs> so you're immune to Ghost, you're immune to Normal, you're immune to Fighting. It just really does kind of a lot. And its only ability is Illusion, but I think that's really cool because, you know, Normal Zoroark was Dark type, so it doesn't really have a lot in terms of defense. I mean, it can be knocked out by a lot of stuff. It is immune to Psychic, but it wasn't... You're not able to catch as many people off guard with it, I think. Whereas this one can probably do that a bit more easily because, you know, it has a lot more immunity. So when you're throwing that out with Illusion and, you know, it looks like something else, there's a reasonable chance nobody's going to realize that it is Zoroark and they may end up missing an attack as a result of that, which is very, very cool. Now, on top of that, they did make it more offensive by, you know, sacrificing a little bit of its defense and special defense from the normal Zoroark, but I think that's okay because you want it speedy and you want it to be really hitting pretty hard because this thing now has 125 special attack, which is pretty good, and if you're able to get off a nasty plot, this thing can actually do a lot of damage pretty quickly. So, I think with that new typing combined with those stats and that ability... I don't think it's going to be like incredible or format breaking, but I do think it is at the very least worthy of trying out, which a lot of people are going to simply because that typing is that good. Now, going on from there, we have Hisui and Braviary Psychic Flying. I think this is one of the biggest like kind of misses they had for the entire game. And let me tell you why. First of all, the stats are fine. It's, it's slower, but it has, you know, that 112 special attack. And, you know, it's slower by 15 points. I mean, normal Braviary has 80 speed. So I don't, you know, Braviary is not a Pokemon that wants to sit there and take hits because it's not that bulky. Um, I do like that they decided to try and make it a special attacker. I think that's really cool. I don't like, so we. this is a Pokemon that's really going to be dependent on what moves it has because building this thing is going to be tricky because you have Sheer Force, right? So if you have a bunch of moves that have secondary effects that are, special in nature you can combine it with a life orb and then you'll deal a bunch of damage and you won't take any of that recoil and you know your your attacks will just be boosted by a whole lot it's great very very powerful very very awesome to use the problem is if it doesn't really get those moves it's very limited in, in what it can actually do and it's not going to be able to do kind of the unfair stuff like it would want to it's kind of what we see with um, like Dredagon. So Dredagon has Sheer Force, which, you know, people like to pair that with Life Orb. But again, it doesn't really have any of the attacks that you want to actually use, you know, Sheer Force and Life Orb with. So I hope that's not the case here with Braviary because I do like the Pokemon quite a bit. And I'm hoping there's some way you can capitalize on that to make it good. What I'm kind of mad about is they gave it Defiance still inside of something else. And they gave it a mere like 83 physical attack, which I get that they want to make it a, you know special attacking Pokemon, but then why wouldn't you give it something like competitive? Because it just would make more sense that way to me, at least. Um, you know, that being said, I suppose if you're able to actually get off a Defiant boost, you know, you don't really need that extra base attack. You're going to be really powerful anyways, but I really think, I, I think it was a missed opportunity to give it a better uh, ability there. And, you know, as good as Sheer Force is, it doesn't do everything. So, I'm a little bummed there, I gotta say, but not the end of the world. I, I think I think it has some potential, as long as it has some really good moves. So, that being said, let's take a look at Hisui and Gudra. Dragon Steel, incredible typing. So, it has some of the similar moves, particularly Sap Stepper, to normal Gudra. Now, stat-wise, it's pretty darn good. I mean, 80, 80 HP, 100 attack, 100 defense, 110 special attack, 150 special defense, and 60 speed. So... Very similar to normal Gudra, except it now has that steel typing. There were a couple, you know, nips and tucks here with the uh, stats, but again, mostly pretty good. One of the reasons I love Gudra, I used it most recently with a uh, Comfy, and you could use Sap Sipper with Triage to just keep giving it plus one attack over and over again. That certainly is an option here, because it does still have Sap Sipper, and it also has now Steel to be a, you know, much more defensive Pokemon than we had before. If you give this thing an Assault Vest, nothing is going to kill it. I mean, it's, it's special defense will be so high. Just nothing can hit it. You know, it'll be really incredible. 
the one thing I really like is now it's neutral against dragon instead of being weak against dragon. And it's also neutral against fairy. So I think both of those are pretty good, you know, kind of options there. It does unfortunately pick up a ground weakness as well as a fighting weakness. So we're going to have to kind of see how that pans out. But that being said, I'm really excited to use this thing. I do like it. A lot of people online are commenting that it looks like it has a squirrel tail or it looks like, a, um, let's say a number two got stuck. Um, but like it's meant to be like a mollusk or like a snail because it was debuted in Kalos and one of the delicacies in France are snails. So spoiler, that's kind of what Gudra has always been designed like. So if you just now think that that's, you know, a tail or something that's more, it's actually supposed to be a metal shell, which is why I think the design is actually really good, despite everybody making fun of it online. And if you have been, you know who you are, because I saw hundreds of memes about this guy when it was debuted the other day. But all right, if you guys did that, I forgive you. Let's move on. All right, Hisuian Avalug. Uh, potentially the most cool looking and potentially most useless Pokemon ever. So Avalug is Ice Rock. It looks really cool. I love the design. I kind of hate everything else because like Sturdy is fine. Strong Jaw is fine. It depends on the moves, of course. 95, uh, you know, HP is fine. 127 attack is reasonable. But then in 184 defense is busted, especially if it has, um, you know, body press. But then, like, what what are you doing with 36 special defense? Like, especially the, the problem, too, the fact that it's four times weak to steel is just a nightmare because steel is such a mandatory typing these days, not only because it just checks a lot of different things, but it's also one of the things that resists and is able to do super effective damage to fairies. And so it's just, you know, we're going to see it everywhere. And this thing could never take a flash cannon. I mean, I know it's sturdy, but... It's just a Pokemon that has a lot of flaws in that regard. I'm hoping its moveset can help it at least somewhat. I'm not holding out hope yet, but fingers crossed, I really want this Pokemon to be good. What really bugs me the most is they went ahead and gave it 10 speed points. Old Evalug is 28 speed. I mean, why? Why would you do that when you could make it like 46 special defense? Like, when you're that low, giving it 10 you know, points in that regard is going to make it so much more bulky compared to the normal form that... It would just make such a big improvement, but we don't have it. We have this guy, um, but again, it, it looks awesome. So I, I'm really hoping something can make this thing at least somewhat playable and competitive because I like it so much, but I, I'm not overly optimistic for it. So that being said, let's talk about Hisuian Decidueye. Again, guys, I was wrong about this Pokemon. This is the normal form. The green form is the shiny one. So... All y'all who yelled at me in the comments, you were right. I made a mistake. I thought they messed it up, but I think it looks fantastic. So I think it was okay. I'm actually very happy with what we ended up on. It does have overgrow and long reach as its hidden ability. Um, and then, you know, it's a pretty normal attacker here. We have 112 physical attack, 95 special attack, which as I remember, we don't ever really use that. Um, we're probably just going to end up using, you know, physical attacks most of the time. Uh, it doesn't have amazing natural bulk. It has... I would say above average natural bulk. Um, you know, the 88 HP, 80 defense, 95 special defense is not bad. It's certainly okay for a starter. It does have a lot of somewhat common weaknesses, which is why I'm a little worried about it. But I still like it quite a bit. It looks really cool. I, I hate the cod piece on this thing. I think that is ridiculous. And because it looks like a mouth, and I can't I just I just don't want to look at that all game which is why i'm probably not going to go with this pokemon but i love the new way they sort of incorporated the new design into what we all know decidueye looks like so overall i do like it quite a lot even though there are some flaws and i'm hoping you know it's not going to be good competitively most likely but again it is really cool but for the grass fighting typing you're probably going to just get you know have lilligant take its spot every time because it's going to do everything Hisui and decidueye can but be way more of a powerhouse so that, that's just me, though. All right. That being said, everybody, let's go to our next one. We have Weird Ear. Everybody knows about our new method of transportation in Hisui. It can jump across, you know, crumbling rocks. It can run around really quick. And it's actually got some decent abilities here. I mean, it has Intimidate and Sap Sipper. Frisk is very good in competitive because you can see their items. It's probably not going to be better than either of the other two. You know, that being said, its stats are all average. Like, look. Weird Ear is a Pokemon for conveyance, right? It is going to get us from A to B. 
it, it doesn't need to be a good attacker or a good fighting Pokemon because at the end of the day, that's not why we have it. We have it to help, you know, carry us around. And I think that that's probably a good thing because, you know, having the dual 105s on, on offense... It's it's okay. Again, not great. It's gonna have a lot of trouble punching through stuff. And having the 72s on defense, that it's pretty loose there. So I don't really like that too much, especially with normal and psychic. Like it's not bad, but there's a lot of kind of moves that do neutral damage to you, meaning you don't resist all that much, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, Intimidate and Sap Sipper are both quite good. Um, so you know you could use this as maybe some kind of switch Intimidator, but again, 65 is a very awkward speed tier so i just i just wouldn't use this competitively just just ride around on it enjoy the hisui region share your bond with weird Ear that way and then uh you know leave, leave it home so it doesn't have to get involved in any battles so going on from there we have cleavor this is the pokemon that was spoiled like first uh it's the first noble we ever saw it is an evolution to scyther uh, it is bug and rock type so again i'm very excited to see what they're able to do with this because we have another sheer force mon and given that it is bug and rock it most likely does have rock slide to go with that 135 physical attack now if it does it's going to be able to do a ton of damage and especially in doubles by just having a life orb to pair with this um the you know speed is kind of similar to like nitto queen and we have seen nitto queen be used in the past as a you know, sort of life orb sheer force sweeper and, you know, Sheer Force and Life Orb doesn't work with Gigantamax, so in Gen 9, when that's gone, you know, we may end up seeing this becoming an actual offensive Pokemon for competitive just due to that, you know, stat and that ability. Um, you know, that being said, it really is going to depend on the moves, so if it doesn't get a lot of moves that work with it, obviously it won't be as viable, but I really am hoping somebody's able to use it because it's a really cool Pokemon with a really good ability, and I... I'm cautiously optimistic this thing is going to really make a splash once it's legal. All right, from there, let's talk about Ursa Luna. Um, the evolution to Ursa Ring that looks like a turkey. Now, we have seen people actually riding it up top, so I don't know if it's actually supposed to be a, uh, you know, Pokemon that you can ride, but I'm not sure. I think it's interesting. I, I like, I really want to see this Pokemon in game before I determine whether or not I like or hate the design. So we'll have to see what happens, but... Let's, let's set that aside for a moment and look at its stats because it's it's very interesting for sure. It has 130 HP, which is very, very good. 140 attack, which is also very, very good. 105 defense, 45 special attack, who cares? 80 special defense and 50 speed. So on top of that, it also has guts and bulletproof, um, you know, and, and unnerve. But I think guts is probably going to be how you're going to, you know, run this thing most of the time. You can use a Flame Orb or a Toxic Orb to give yourself a status and be able to start sweeping from there. Um, Guts with a 140 attack is pretty good. Um, it is not... It's going to be most of the time probably a Trick Room attacker because with that speed being so low, you're going to want to set up Trick Room and start sweeping that way. Uh, the only issue is at 50 speed, it's going to get undersped by a lot of things, but, I mean, its natural bulk from that 130 HP and that 105 defense is really going to help it quite a lot, which I think is pretty important. So overall, on top of that, you know, ground and normal are both pretty decent typings. Normal is a pretty good defensive typing. And, you know, we've seen before normal when paired up with kind of a bulkier mon is a very, very dangerous kind of thing. And that's what we're seeing here. So fingers crossed that it's good. I think it's a cool Pokemon. I really want to see it do well. And, you know, given some of the high numbers that we have, I am thinking you can make somewhat of a splash, probably not in BGC, maybe singles, but still a very cool Pokemon. All right, from there, we have our Basket Legion male. It is Water Ghost, and as you can see, it's represented here by the Red Stripe uh, Basket Legion. Now, real quick, I did mention this in a previous video, but I just want to take a second again to talk about it. In this region, we don't have the normal blue and red stripe Basculin. We have a white stripe Basculin. Now, it's not considered to be a Suian form or anything like that. It's just a different form. But this one can evolve, this is the only one that can evolve into Basket Legion based on its gender. So if it is male, it'll evolve into the Red Stripe Basket Legion. And if it is female, it will evolve into the Blue Stripe Basket Legion. Now, we want to talk about everything that's going on here because this Pokemon has the potential to really do a lot of damage. Because Water Ghost, pretty decent typing. It's not great, but, you know, we've seen Jellicent have that typing and do pretty well. Um, you know, obviously Water, we took Grass and Electric. 
Ghost, which is Ghost in Dark. That's not that bad. There, you know, there's things we can do there, which is fine. But look at these abilities. We have Mold Breaker, which is really cool. It can get around, you know, different abilities. But Adaptability. Adaptability, if you don't know what that is, it's an ability that lets you actually get double damage from Stab instead of just 1.5. Now, if we look at what its moves are, right? It has 120 HP, 112 attack, 65 defense, 75 special defense, 80 special attack, and 78 speed. Now, if we are able to use an item like, say, a Scarf or maybe using, like, Tailwind to give this thing a little bit more speed, it really has the potential to do some damage because of that adaptability. If it does get a really powerful Ghost-type physical move like Poltergeist, or if it gets a really powerful water move like Liquidation, the fact that it has adaptability and that 112 attack is going to make it do a lot of damage really, really quickly. And, you know, its bulk is not great aside from its HP, but again, that's nothing to sneeze at. And, you know, 78 is not going to outspeed much, but if you are able to get it under a Tailwind, you're probably going to do a lot of damage. So, I don't know if this is going to make a big splash, but again, just given the sheer amount of damage it can output with that adaptability, I think it's probably, probably going to be a pretty interesting Pokemon. Now, we got to talk about female Basque Legion here. The blue stripe one, obviously you can see it's a little bit different here. It has the same abilities, but they kind of um, didn't really want to make this one as offensively tough as the red stripe because we still have that 120 HP, but we only have 92 attack, 100 special attack, 65, 75, and 78. Those are the same. So neither one of those attack stats are all that great, unfortunately. They're all... They're both just kind of, eh, you know? So I don't really think that, <laughs> I gotta be honest, I don't think you should ever use this one. I think you should always use the red one because at the end of the day, it's just gonna do so much more damage and you're not really getting any other benefit that's really worth it here unless this somehow gets a special attack that is just so overwhelmingly good that not using adaptability with it would be, you know, dumb. But just based on what we know about Basque Legion and Basculin, I'd probably just go for the more physical oriented one and use that attack stat to do a lot of damage. All right, now next up we have Sneasler who is poison and fighting. Now pressure and poison touch both kind of stink. Um, so this is really gonna come down to, you know, what you can do with its, you know, moves because 130 attack, 120 speed is really good. This thing is just all in as a glass cannon. So really the entire value of this is gonna, you know, kind of come down to what moves it has because that's really going to make the determination because you know it's weak to ground it's weak to psychic extremely weak to psychic weak to flying and there's just a lot of kind of miscellaneous things that can be an issue here but i'm hoping it still has some access to some of the support moves like fake out because given the stats alone this pokemon has the potential to do some damage and i'm kind of hoping they find some way to actually make it really viable in battle all right after that, we have our new legendary, Enamorous Incarnate. So, Fairy Flying, 100% Nightmare Fuel. Uh, it has the Karen pose. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I am very sorry to report that this thing is probably going to be amazing and competitive, so you're probably going to see this more often than not. So, Healer is not an ability you're going to use with this Pokemon. You're going to be using Contrary most of the time because it is a 135 Special Attacker, with 106 speed. Now, its defensive stats are very average, but I really want to know what it's able to do with that contrary hidden ability. Now, if you don't know what contrary is, basically any stat changes have the opposite effect. So, let's say you intimidate this thing, you know, with just one of your opponent's Pokemon that comes in. You're going to get a stat boost instead of a stat drop. So, really, depending on what moves this thing gets, it could be really, really powerful. I mean... You know, the, the, the reason I think this thing is such a pain in the butt is because it's reasonably fast and has a lot of special attacks. So if you're seeing an opponent with like an Incineroar, you can just switch this thing in, get a boost that way. Or if you're predicting they're going to go for a Snarl, switch this thing in and get a, you know, special uh, plus one special attack boost. Like this thing is crazy. Fairy Flying too. Like the, the real reason that I hate this thing on top of that is Fairy and Flying are both just incredibly spammable types because... There's not a lot of common things that resist them, and you can just sit there and spam like a Moon Blast or like an Air Slash, and most of what you're going to see coming in is going to take at least neutral damage from that, and if in the meantime you happen to get some boost to your special attack, it's just going to be that much more crazy. I mean, the, 
the, the sheer just level of what of how much damage the thing can put out is pretty scary i'm not gonna lie the sky's the limit of really what this pokemon could do and, you know if it gets a move like uh i don't know some like a move where it drops its own you know moves like if it gets uh what's it, what's it called floor cannon it's just gonna end up getting some special attack boost instead of drops i mean it's it's crazy how good this pokemon has the potential to be and it's very scary because even though it's very you know sort of trimmed down it can just spam those moves over and over again and do so much damage so easily, which is why it's just such a scary Pokemon to deal with. But like all genies, the incarnate form isn't the only one because we also have Enamorous Therian, which is also very flying, obviously. Now, this version is a lot different, and I don't know how I feel about it. The incarnate form is so strong, I don't know why you would necessarily go in this direction, but it's still not bad because you still have the 135 special attack, which is really solid. Your speed is down to 46, which is pretty rough, but you still have 74 HP, and then your defenses become 110 and 100, and you're still keeping the 115 physical and the 135 special. So I'm not entirely sure what the game plan would be here, but again, you know, having Overcoat and some pretty decent defenses could make this thing pretty good. Uh, you know, it could actually be viable in Trick Room at this, you know, range. It would still be undersped by some kind of different things, but you're going to underspeed and, you know, sweep a lot of the kind of common things you're going to see you don't get the contrary boost which are you know it's neither here nor there you do get overcoat instead so i'm not really sure how i feel about this thing but you know it's still potentially scary because it has a lot of bulk and can do quite a bit of damage with that 135 special attack so i'm, I'm eager to see if anybody opts to use this instead of the uh, incarnate one and everybody this is the moment you have been waiting for it's time for our legendaries for the region so we have the origin or lord form of Dialga. Now, we don't know if it's actually going to fuse with Arceus or if it just picks up like Arceus's energy. It is apparently in the story, somewhat of a spoiler here, that it's going to actually be this is the real form of Dialga, which I'm sure some people are not happy about. But as we can see, its moves are pressure and telepathy. Both of those are pretty uh, just okay. You know, telepathy is better because like if your ally is going to use a move that's going to hit you, you will you'll ignore it. So your ally could spam like Earthquake and you'd be fine. But we do have 100 HP, 100 attack, 120 defense, 150 special attack, 120 special defense, and 90 speed. So they did take, I believe, uh, a little bit away from its attack stat to give it to its defense stat, which is pretty fantastic. This thing is tanky as all heck. I mean, 120 on both defenses, 100 HP, and 150 special attack. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not all that different from normal Dialga because you know, normal Dialga is already very strong. And we're not seeing like a jumping to like 180 or anything like that. But we are seeing those points just kind of shifted around a little bit. And I, for one, think it's a pretty good move because I really think Dialga needs the stats to kind of be where they are now. And I'm hoping that Dialga is going to be a threat again in VGC. But, you know, we don't know for sure. But seeing those extra points there really kind of makes it interesting and makes me really want to try it again. Now, obviously, Dialga has a partner in crime and that is Palkia. This is going to be its origin lord form. It is Water Dragon. Uh, has no arms, unfortunately, which we don't really know what's going on there. Um, but still very interesting looking. You know, it still has its wings. It has some tails now, which is uh, curious. But it has pressure telepathy, just like Dialga. And in the case here, it actually is going to be uh, 90 HP, 100 attack, 100 defense, 150 special attack, 120 special defense, and 120 speed. Again, very much like Dialga, kind of things just moved around a little bit, but they both seem like they were really streamlined to be, you know, as offensive as possible while also being as defensive as possible because these Pokemon are going to be able to take a lot of hits and do a lot of damage. And even though it was pretty minor, you know, switches and minor tweaks, I think they did a really good job with it because these Pokemon are very, very intimidating now, despite the way they look, which is, uh, you know, certainly a pretty... Uh, T large testament to how impressive they are so that being said everybody those are the stats that we have right now this is everything we know about the new pokemon so let me know down in the comments which one's your favorite because i really want to hear from you guys and hear what you're most excited about using do you want to use these guys in vgc or singles do you not want to either way let me know what you're thinking and start planning now because when pokemon legends arceus gets here you'll be able to add as many of these pokemon as you want to your next team all right so there you have it everybody that was all of the stats and you know abilities for all of the brand new Pokemon and forms in Pokemon Legends Arceus. I, uh, I guess I'm pretty excited. I didn't think they would be as bold as they were with some of them giving them, you know, 
several instances of sheer force or, you know, giving him adaptability. It's really cool to see them being willing to take risks and really kind of shape Pokemon that they think will make a big splash in the competitive scene. And, you know, honestly, this has gotten me even more excited to play Pokemon Legends Arceus because now not only are there a bunch of new Pokemon to discover and, you know, bond with and... And honestly, this has made me even more excited for Pokemon Legends Arceus because not only are there a bunch of new Pokemon for me to find and catch, some of them may be competitive in VGC and singles. And I am so excited to get them and I can't wait to use them in any sort of competitive scene when Gen 9 does roll around. So that being said, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video, but most importantly, I hope you found it entertaining and informative. And I hope you're able to use it to kind of figure out what Pokemon you want to use in Pokemon Legends Arceus. I've been playing for Bridge 4 Games. Thank you all so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. Again, if you did like the video, please make sure that you absolutely gig impact that like button in the face. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel to become part of our amazing Pokemon community to make sure that you never miss any of the awesome videos like this one. Remember that the best Pokemon games are the ones that you love to play and the proper ways to play them. I'll however you have the most fun. I hope each and every one of you have a happy, epic, awesome, and amazing day. And I will see you in the next video. See you around. Bye-bye.